And now we will start with the Maxwell equations in materials. So this we will be starting for the electric case in material from chapter 4 of Griffiths while the magnetic portion in material we will cover chapter 6 of Griffiths. So let's start with the chapter 4 electric fields in matter and we start with the, a little bit review of Maxwell's equations and in free space we have covered them like when your material is vacuum. So the very first equation that we derived was the Gauss's law. Divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon naught. And its integral form was integral on a closed surface, so it's a surface integral, and E dot dA equals Q enclosed over epsilon naught. <coughs> Similarly, we got for the electric field that the curl of electric field will be equals to zero. And what was its integral form? By applying Stokes theorem, it was a closed loop integral, path integral, and it was E dot dL equals zero. Or you can write E dot dL equal constant. So, 3. I am writing the another equation for now the magnetic field. The divergence of magnetic field will be equal to 0. And the integral form of this will be the magnetic flux on a closed surface B dot dA will be equal to 0. There will be no magnetic flux at all. And the fourth equation that we derived was that the curl of B will be equal to mu naught times J, J being the current density. And the integral form of this is B dot DL on a closed loop integral B dot DL and this is equal to mu naught I enclosed. We got the idea from the second and the third equation. The second equation implied that electric field will not curl. It means electric field is the result of something that is going in one direction like gradient of some potential. While equation 3 told us that the curl of the divergence of B is equal to 0, it means B is the result of some curling potential and that was that B equals <coughs> del cross V. Sorry. This V we write is A where A is magnetic vector potential. Just to differentiate it from this one, it's a scalar potential and it is the result of a vector potential. So that's why the, this potential is more important compared to this one because that one is scalar in nature. Now, after this, we will start with a material case. Now what is a material? Material, you know that there is a variety of material. Some materials are conductors, some semiconductor and some insulators. Here we will mainly discuss insulators, which we call in other words dielectrics. 
where there are no free charges. The free charges situation we will discuss in the case of conductors. So in insulator we are discussing dielectrics. Now what are dielectrics? Dielectrics all the electrons are actually bound to the nuclei inside an atom. They are not you can say free to go around and that's a dielectric. Ideal dielectric zero free electrons there but nothing is ideal so it will be you can say approximated to such a material. Now you know that when you will put a neutral atom like inside dielectric there will be atoms all the atoms will have their electrons with them so all the atoms will be neutral when you will place a neutral atom inside an electric field whether they will be affected by the electric field or not it's neutral although it's neutral but it is composed of positive and negative charges so the electric field will actually cause some you can say polarization some rotation inside this one and let's see this one that when you place let's say this is an electric field and here you are having a positive plate and here you are having a negative plate so the electric field is in this direction this will be the direction of electric field and here if I place a neutral atom which is having positive core at the center and the negative electron is going around it electron cloud so what will happen it depends actually on the strength of electric field now if the strength of the electric field will be far less than the field which is between this positive and negative charge it will not be affected okay but if this one is comparable are greater than this one then it will cause changes in this system now what will happen that this negative is actually repelled by this field this plate this field so it will try to go there and attracted by this one and the positive is attracted by this one and repelled by this one so this atom will actually cause two things one will be it will rotate and the rotation you call torque and inside uh, this atom there may be a situation in the field will grow that your setup becomes like this that negative comes in here and positive comes in here so the neutrality will be disturbed it will be stretched and that stretching is called polarization so two things can occur stretching and stretching always requires more electric field you are stretching it and there is bending bending it can bend like instead of atom if I consider a molecule then inside a molecule you are having for example the molecular structure I consider of water then you are having oxygen and this oxygen is bonded with two hydrogen now as this one is at the vertex and it is having the two electrons with it now the when field is applied to this one it will rotate it will bend the structure will bend the molecule will bend and this building will cause torque in this molecule right so one is the building 
which requires low energy in a low electric field and stretching it requires more electric field. So the stretching is associated with the polarization, the bending with the torque in this one. So we will check that now when we will apply our equations on this, what will happen to the neutral atom inside in electric field. This combination, this you call neutral atom, when it is positive and negative and they are at equilibrium distance. But when they are stretched like this, then you call this one is a dipole and it will have some dipole moment. Now this dipole moment are you can say the stretching is being induced in this atom. So that's why we call it is induced dipole. And it will have some dipole moment and that dipole moment we define is P equals Q times D. The charge times the distance. This is the distance with which this is being stretched. So it will be the dipole moment and we can write that this dipole moment are we call this the polarization in our material, the stretching. This will be equal to P and equals, this will be proportional to the electric field. More the electric field, more will be this polarization. And this is equal to alpha times E, where alpha is called atomic polarizability. But this is to be in the same direction as this one is the electric field direction. This atomic polarizability has been calculated there and we will not cover it, but P is also equal to Q times D, which I call the dipole moment. Now we are having some uh, molecules like we call them polar molecules like water is a polar molecule and polar molecules actually bends and I am considering the water molecule here and inside a water molecule we know that as I uh, draw here this thing you are getting oxygen here and this oxygen is bonded with a hydrogen and this one is H plus and similarly another hydrogen and this is H plus and we are having O minus here the angle which is subtended here is 105 degree approximately it is 1 point, 104 point something so I am approximating it like this now let's say we consider the center of this system. This is equivalent to if I draw a line like this and here this is the central point and I call this a reference point O. Here I am having minus Q charge and here is plus Q charge because the plus here and the minus here. And the distance between the two charges is D. So one, the force on positive will be in this direction, which I will call F plus. And this one is in the opposite direction, and it is F minus. Because when you will place this molecule inside an electric field here, then you are having uh, you can see the forces in this direction. Minus means our field is in this direction. So plus in that one and minus over here. And as I know that F is equal to Q times E. So F will be in the direction of electric field. 
But AC and charges are different. So in one, if the field is in this direction, the force is in this direction. On the other, it will be in this direction. Now, what this force will be doing? The translational force, which I call F, is always able to move a particle, to move a charge. While torque is a rotational force, it is always rotating something. So it will bend or it will rotate this structure. How much it will rotate? It will rotate it along the direction of the field. If the field will be sufficient, it will completely align it in that direction. If it will be less, there will be some angle at which this will be having its bending. So I can say that the plus here force and the minus will come here is plus minus. And now I can write what will be here torque is represented by M. And the total torque will be the torque R plus. R plus will be this distance from here to here. This will be R plus and this will be R minus. So R plus, we know that torque is equal to R cross F. So it will be R plus cross F and it will be a plus. Plus the torque on the other one as well because it will be from the moment arm and the moment arm here is this much and there is that one and it will be R minus cross F minus. Both of these will be added. Now I know that R is equal to D by 2 so I can write D by 2 cross F and for F I can write Q times E. So, plus d by 2 again and q by q times e. And this q e will be minus. So, if I want to mark this one minus, then if the, from the central point this r plus is plus, then r will be minus. So, this one will be minus as well. If you don't want to differentiate between this one, and then don't write minus sign before. And as they are, this minus and minus are becoming plus, so it will be equal to 2 times d by 2, and it will be d cross q e. The total will be equal to d cross q e.